Welcome to ECLM Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be discussing the topic energy changes in physical and chemical processes and our subtopic for today is enthalpy of formation which you are going to relate to the Hess law. So you define what Hess law is and then how are we able to calculate now enthalpy of formation using the Hess law and then you do a few practice questions. So enthalpy of formation is the heat change when one mole of a substance is formed from its constituent element under standard conditions. So every time we want to form a certain compound from its elements, you notice as we balance, you're going to discuss how we do the balancing. Whatever heat change that occurs when that process happens is what we refer to as the enthalpy of formation. So we shall use standard condition for measuring enthalpy changes. So standard conditions, meaning we have standard pressure and temperature and concentration. We mentioned this previously, that is one molar, one ATM, and 298 Kelvin. So the com for comparison purposes, certain conditions have been chosen as a standard measurement, as I've said. So 298 Kelvin, one atmosphere pressure. So enthalpy of formation, uh, not be determined experimentally because reactions cannot take place under standard condition. So in such cases, the enthalpy change is determined theoretically by using measurable enthalpies and some of the measurable enthalpies are like combustion. So you notice as we do the energy cycle diagram, which is different from the energy level diagram, we are going to be taking advantage of the enthalpy of combustion of reactions to come up with the enthalpy of uh, react, uh, formation. So the enthalpy of formation is calculated using the law of constant of heat summation, which is also known as the Hess law. So the Hess law states that energy change for converting reactants to products is the same regardless of the route by which the chemical change occurs. So before we go to the examples, let's look at a certain chemical reaction. So you can react reaction A, substance A plus substance B to form substance C. So you can, you can, let's correct that. So you can move from substance A to substance B by passing through another alternative route where A reacts to form substance C and then C reacts to form substance B. When it comes to Hess law, it is important to pay attention to the, how the arrows are moving. There's something we know we refer to as vectors when we are discussing mathematics. We have the positive vector and the negative. So when it's going to the positive in the positive direction, we add. If it's opposite, we go on the opposite way of subtract. So for us to get the 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 vector A B. In math, we shall say it's equals to a vector of AC plus the vector of CB. And in this case, now you notice this upper reaction is where our enthalpy of formation is. So enthalpy of formation from A to B, we can move to this root instead of going directly from A to B. Sometimes the A to C might be and C and B might be combustion, but we can be able to get the value of A, B regardless of what we have in the other roots. So A, B will always be to, equal to A, C plus C, B. So this helps us to get the specific formula we use in the, in the Hess law. So depending on how the how the arrows are. For example, the arrows can be interchanged as A going to B is the same as it can be written like this, like if we had this kind of vector. So if you want to move from vector AB, it's the same as vector AC plus vector CB. But note that vector AB is opposite direction. So it is going to be negative AC. Remember that plus CB. So we will take note of these changes, especially on the directions as we do calculation. This thing, this uh, formula is also going to apply when we come to 
uh, heat of solution, lattice energy, and hydration energies. So let's do a few examples of Hess law so that you can be able to understand. So what we are drawing here is the cycle diagram. You can also be told to present your equation, your values in an energy level diagram. So use the information below to determine the enthalpy chain of combustion of carbon. So basically, we have been told to get the enthalpy of formation of carbon for oxide. So before we come to what we have, we need to come up with our own equations first of all. And then we relate with what we have to get. So there are different ways to do this question on S law. So I'll show you one method. So we are doing the enthalpy of formation of carbon dioxide. When you look at carbon dioxide, is CO2. So it is formed from carbon and oxygen. So the atoms are carbon solid plus oxygen gas to form carbon dioxide gas. So when we are doing S law, when you're writing the equations, we do not we do not interfere with the balancing on the product. If we want to ensure that there are equal atoms that have been used, we always do the changes on the reactants. You notice that in our examples. So carbon solid reacts with oxygen to form carbon for oxide. So carbon also can react with oxygen to form carbon two oxide which also reacts with oxygen to form carbon dioxide, as you know it. So when carbon reacts with oxygen to form carbon two oxide, it reacts with a half molecule of oxygen. It's only one atom, as you can see. Since this one is balanced, we can balance now the reaction of carbon to form carbon dioxide. So we have one carbon and one oxygen. So we need to react with one atom of oxygen, which is the same as a half an oxygen molecule. So oxygen cannot react with itself. So carbon monoxide also needs to react with a certain amount of oxygen to form carbon dioxide. You see the carbons are balanced. Our oxygens, we require one more oxygen. So it's going to be a half oxygen molecule. After that, now when we, we have already drawn the cycle and our equations are balanced, we compare the equations that we have come up with with already what we have given. So you can see the first equation that you've been given, it's carbon reacting with a half of oxygen to form carbon monoxide. It relates to this equation that we have here. So the change that occurs here is negative 110.45 kilojoules. Then you notice carbon monoxide reacts with a half oxygen gas to form carbon four oxide, which relates to what we have down here. So this is negative 282.0 kilojoules. So if you want to get this, or the, the, the enthalpy of formation of carbon four oxide, it is going to be the enthalpy of combustion of carbon plus the enthalpy of combustion. Let me make that correction. So enthalpy of combustion of carbon monoxide. Hope you can see that. So from to move from this region to this region, you can go from carbon to carbon monoxide plus carbon monoxide to carbon four. That basically gives us now this is the formula we will use. You see the formula is derived from the equation that we have formed of the cycle. So the enthalpy of formation of carbon four oxide is equals to the enthalpy of combustion of carbon we have noted is negative 110.45 and then there is a positive sign from the formula plus the enthalpy of combustion of carbon monoxide which is negative 282 kilojoules which gives us that the enthalpy of formation of carbon four oxide will be so it will be negative 392.45 kilojoules. So that's how we have used the Hess law to enable us to draw this energy cycle diagram. If you were to draw the energy level diagram, this is how it would look like. So, so we have the, the change at the x-axis on energy change. And then we have the reaction path. So you notice 
we can start from any direction. So we already have the reactant, which is our carbon and oxygen. So we will not start down. So remember, it's a, this the enthalpy of formation of carbon to form carbon four oxide, or the enthalpy of formation of carbon four oxide is ex, exothermic. So the reactant will be at a higher position. So the reactant, which is carbon plus oxygen gas, first of all, you start with this step where it reacts to form carbon monoxide and it loses heat. So when it loses heat, we go down and we go down, you can see we are going down negative 110.45 kilojoules to form, to form carbon monoxide. So carbon monoxide also reacts with oxygen, as you can see here, half a half molecule of oxygen. It also goes down or loses heat, which is negative 282.0 kilojoules. And remember, it's less than the initial one. So make sure you show with the different sizes to form, to form carbon four oxide gas. So you can see we can move from carbon to oxygen to where carbon four oxide forms. So it's the same as this. So this total will be negative 392.45 kilojoules. So you see it's, it's different direction. Carbon reacts with oxygen to form carbon two. It loses 110.45 kilojoules of heat, which further reacts with oxygen to lose more heat to form carbon four oxide, which is the same as moving from carbon to oxygen directly to form carbon four oxide. So that's how we are presented it in an energy level diagram. So let's look at another question. So given the standard enthalpy of combustion as these ones, find the standard enthalpy of formation of ethane. You've been given the formula. So when you look at ethane, it has been formed from carbon and hydrogen. That tells you the atoms of what we are working with. So we we'll start with what now we have before we go to the equation. So ethane would be formed by a carbon, which will react with hydrogen to form uh ethane c2 h2 so you notice in the product it's c2 we have two carbons but in the reaction we have one so we need to balance by putting a two here for the hydrogen it is already balanced you see every time we do a uh, uh hess law when we are doing we are drawing the cycle diagram i said in the first equation for formation we always balance the reactant we can use even halves but the products of the first formation should not be interfered with. So after that, we do the combustion. So when you heat carbon in oxygen, you are going to form carbon four oxide gas. So we balance this equation first before moving on. We have one, two carbons here and one carbon here. So we need to put a two here. So, and then you notice we have two molecules of oxygen, basically four atoms of oxygen. That means we reacted with two oxygen atoms. Hydrogen also reacts with what, with oxygen to form water. So we balance the equation, the hydrogens are balanced, but we need only one atom of water. So that is the same as a half oxygen molecule because this gives only one atom. So carbon four oxide also and water can be formed when a time reacts with oxygen you see how the arrow has moved now so that means that when we balance the equation we have two carbons both sides we have two hydrogens both sides but the number of oxygen is four molecules four atoms of oxygen plus one atom which gives us five so this is the same as five over two oxygen molecule so our equations are all of them balanced so let's, let's see how we are able to get the formula now. So the enthalpy of formation of C2H2 is equals to the enthalpy of combustion of enthalpy of combustion of carbon and hydrogen. You put that together. And then you can see our arrow is going in the opposite direction. That tells you plus and minus 
minus the enthalpy of combustion of C2H2. So you see from the equations, so you're able to see how the arrow goes. This tells you it's supposed to be minus. So it means it's going to be the enthalpy of combustion of carbon and hydrogen minus the enthalpy of combustion of C2H2. That's what we are going to use as our formula. So let's look for the values using the equation. So you can see we have two carbon atoms being reacted to form two molecules of carbon dioxide. But what we have been given is per mole. But we have two moles. So it is going to mean is you are going to multiply by two. So two my times negative 3, 94 kilojoules per mole. And then for the hydrogen, you see it's a replica. So hydrogen plus a half molecule of oxygen to form water. So here it's going to be negative 286. And then for the uh, ethane, combustion of ethane, it's a replica. So you can see ethane is burning in, in oxygen to form. So this is going to be negative 1300. So when you look at now, when we look at the equation, so the enthalpy of formation of C2H2 or ethane is going to be equal to the enthalpy of combustion of carbon and hydrogen, which is the same as. So if we say 2 times 394, it's going to give us a 7, which is negative 788, plus for the hydrogen, which is negative 286. And then from the formula, we know it is minus. You see where the formula comes in? And then into bracket, the enthalpy of combustion of ethane, which is minus 1300. So this is the same as, so 7, 788 and plus 286, which will give us negative 1074. So this one minus minus 1300 which is the same as minus 7, 1074 plus 1300 which gives us positive 226 and we will call it kilojoules per mole so this is the enthalpy of formation of the ethane so that's how we calculate Hess law and use Hess law to get the enthalpy of formation so I hope you have been able to understand. So you can go ahead and convert this in an energy level diagram and see if you can do that slowly. So that brings us to the end. Uh, see you in the next lesson.